Okay, regular expressions. Who doesn't know? Bummer. Then I'll make this fast if everybody knows them. So what is it? It's pattern matching. Very, very flexible pattern matching. And they're, uh, they're not a necessary evil, but they have their place. But they're still evil. They are, as I've written down there, a write once, read never technology. Donald Knuth, one of my favorite nerds, said, yeah, uh, oh, I might mix up my quotes here. But I believe he said, Linux is a nice set of 30 regular expressions implementations under one umbrella. Or maybe he said, the man who says he has a problem and says, ah, I know, I'll use regular expressions. Now he has two problems. <laughs> regular expressions are something that we all should know are there and know what they can do. And then we need to know what tools to use so that we don't have to fight that hard with them. And I'm going to make a big point here. You see on there, test, test, test. I think this is what I'm, the biggest thing I'm going to bring to the table here. Even if you've all seen it, I'm going to, I think I'm going to enlighten you when to use it. So I mostly only use it when I'm doing a search and I want to find, I, want, I don't want to even want to search. I just want to know, does this pattern match what I'm looking for? One set of input, one line, one pattern, and give me a Boolean result. But there's so much more you can do with them if you're building the app that needs them. I don't use them for everything. I use them when I need them, and I avoid them the rest of the time. I don't really avoid them, but I don't do anything sophisticated with them. You can use them for search and replace or just search. You can use them for filters to say, these things match, these things don't, discard those. And I'm going to show you how to use them in the place for string parsing when that string parsing is used for validation. And hard-coded logic, I have an example that does both those last two items. And oh, it's the first one here. So this is real code that I took out of a program today. It's written in Delphi, which is object Pascal. So in the top is what I pulled out of an actual program. And it's, I wrote this T-string hacker class. And if I may say so, it's pretty gnarly. It's a fluid interface that looks something like Link, but it lets me use all these string functions that normally would be somewhere in the RTL and hard to find or have a million overloads and just makes them a lot easier to use. And that's not bad looking code until you think about what it does. All it's trying to do is figure out if a line matches a single pattern. And so I replaced that when it didn't work because it changed. They changed the, uh, this client changed their output. And instead of having zero padded numbers, they have unpadded numbers, and it broke it by one digit. <coughs> yeah, you might. So now what we needed was something that A, was more readable, and B, could adapt, could change with it. So in the second example, I've replaced it with this. Pattern goes out to an INI file, which they already have, and gets a new setting for remote outgoing file pattern. Doesn't matter what it's called. It just gets a string, which contains a regular expression. And in the second line, I ask if the input string matches that pattern, and I get a Boolean response as match. The benefit to that is not only is the code smaller, not only is it more readable, but the pattern that I'm trying to match against is now in an INI file and not in a Pascal file that has to run through SVN to a build server, through a compiler, through a linker, and then wait two weeks for a deploy through the same CI system. I just go to the server and edit the INI file and fix it. And then it works the next day. So what you need to know is that if you have an, a search dialog in an application, it probably supports regex and you, probably, you may not have even known it. A lot of them, if you just start putting in regular expressions, they start working. They probably say so somewhere in there, but maybe in the help file and you never read it. And that's because it works. If you just type in whatever text you're looking for, regular expressions by themselves will do a contains search. Anywhere in the text, it will find a match and it will return the location of that. So you don't have to know regular expressions if you're my grandma to do a search. It still works. But if you're Dan and you just throw this stuff out in your sleep, you can do some very powerful stuff all in the same dialog box with a single implementation. It's not something you use every day, and I want to make a point of this. 
Nobody knows all these stupid little symbols and regular expressions unless they have a really miserable job. <laughs> we don't know. We use them when we need them. We look them up every single time. And then we put the sheet, cheat sheet back and we don't worry about it until something breaks. That's okay. That's what everybody does. If you're the exception, keep it to yourself. You're a nerd. Just kidding, Nate. So, use a test bed. Regular expressions work, but who does unit testing? Lots and lots of unit testing. You ever teach a new guy to do a unit test? What's the first thing he does? He writes a test that checks to see if it worked, right? And then what's the second thing he does? He moves on. I run my unit tests. It worked. Passes. Great. Well, what if I pass in garbage? What does it do? What if I pass in an edge case? What does it do? They don't write those tests until they really have an understanding of what unit testing is for. And unit testing has to decide what it does with various types of inputs, not just the one you're expecting or the most common or the first one that you, you get from the client. It needs to test the good and the bad. You need failure cases to make sure that it doesn't tolerate bad input and that it behaves properly. Regular expressions are always tested the same way. Someone says, okay, does it match the input that I want it to? Great, moving on. You've got to watch for the wrong stuff too and make sure it doesn't pass. <clears throat> so I'll cover that a little bit more, but that's the one thing I want you all to take away from this. Regular expressions suck mostly because people don't test them. So use a test bed. We'll cover the ones that I found and the ones that I use, etc. Another thing to know is the PCRE, you'll see that. That means Perl style regular expressions. When someone says Perl reg regular expressions, they're not talking about someone writing code in Perl. This is where those came from. There are regular expressions in other places, but they have slightly different syntax for the, the off the wall stuff. And I'm not going to cover a lot of that, but most of the others use POSIX. So there's PCRE and there's POSIX. You'll also see Java, JavaScript, Ruby. They all might be a little bit different, but they're trying to adhere to one of these two to varying degrees of success. Get a cheat sheet. I'm not the biggest fan of any of these, but the pink one is probably best. It doesn't matter who wrote them. There's one that's pink, one that's green, and one that's blue. Find one you like. Name it whatever color it is. Print it off and put it in your desk. Pull it out when you need it. So the characters that you can type in to match actual text are here. You can type in an actual literal character, like a letter B, and it will match a letter B. But if you want to match sets, there are preset escape codes for that. I've listed them here. A dot is any character. We get a little more specific here. You can define your own sets in the square brackets. And those are pretty straightforward for anybody who's ever dealt with sets. I didn't touch anything. Uh, Dan. Yeah, I thought I fixed that. That's correct. It's it's any character. It doesn't include white space or anything like that. It's upper and lower alphabetic numeric and some punctuation, not all punctuation characters. Is that what you said? Yeah, any, any character with different cases, same number. Yeah. Uh, D is digits, S is white space. Uh, the lower case is the inclusive, the upper case is exclusive. So slash W is not words. Slash D is not digits. Uh, slash special character, these are escaped character literals uh, that, have, that otherwise have special meaning in your uh, expressions. These are all on the cheat sheets. Don't worry too much about what you're seeing here. Multiplicity is important to know. How many of this character am I expecting? Because we specify characters, but we're probably dealing with lots and lots of characters in a string. We want to specify multiplicity. And you have a lot of control here. Anchors, there are only two. That's easy. Uh, that's not entirely true, but I've only used two in my life. If you need the others, pity on you. But there's one at the left, one at the right. You can use one or the other, both or neither. If you use neither, it's a contains clause, right? Precedence. We have parentheses in here to specify precedence. I don't think anybody here needs any explanation there and you can use the OR operator. There's no AND operator that I'm aware of or anything like that. There's just OR because you can't, there's, there's no reasonable way for regular expressions to say, look for this where not this and this, but not that, etc. There's no not. It's just an inclusive is matching. Um, 
So there's only an or operator, as far as I know, with regard to precedence. And there's another thing that it does, I put in this little did you know box. If you have text in your expression and it matches, it just matches text, but it does something different in the output after it matches. If it's in parentheses, it makes it a group. And you can see that on some of the tools. They highlight them differently, and you can tell where your groups are. And it's important to know because once you have a group in your output, you can perform operations on those groups. So in order to perform those operations, you need the groups where you want them to be. So you need to know that you can define them using parentheses. If we have time, we'll show you some of that. So here are some tools. Uh, the web ones, regex 101 is very competent. I would just use that unless you need something more competent. I have a license for regex buddy that's coming. Uh, I don't have a copy of it right now to show you, but I don't think that's a big deal. I have a screenshot of the one feature that I think is super duper cool that these web ones don't have, and it's for, any guesses? Testing. Anyway, so those are in there. Test beds. Regex Buddy does on the left what? And I didn't know that it did. When I wrote the app on the right, which is my test bed, how many tests do I have in there? Every line in there on both sides is a unit test for a regular expression. And I can click on that enter test values and just type, and every keystroke I make puts another entry in there to test. So I can very quickly hammer out hundreds of test cases to match against. And if I have auto arrange on or I click the arrange button, it shows me, it, it moves everything left and right into the appropriate category, whether it's matched or mismatched. If I have certain expectations of this will match or not, I can turn off that auto arrange, put it in the ca column that it should be in, and it will be red if it's not what I expect. So I have uh, an expectation of an actual. Uh, this doesn't have very good support yet. I need to fix it for um, uh, some of these operation modes that we're going to cover here, pattern modifiers. Uh, these are not part of your expression usually. Some implementations will ask you to tack them onto the end as text, but usually they're specified in as a property in your library or as a you know some other place in your code, or uh, uh, some are in line. So you can see that that first example has a slash g. Regex 101 does that, I think. And the second one has a question mark I in parentheses. And Regex Buddy and my stuff are PCRE compliant. They do it that way. So you're going to have to look at the tools that you're using and figure out which way they want you to use pattern modifiers. But the pattern modifiers themselves, the letter that you use, are pretty universal. I learned today that there are some stuff that only Tickle uses. Who knows what Tickle is? Good. Nobody should know what Tickle is. <laughs> Here are the modifier, pattern modifiers, just the letters. So G is a global search, which means I want to match on, let's say I'm looking for the word the. I want to find all the the's. I don't want to find the first one. Or just determine that, yes, somewhere in this whole big document is the word the. Not useful. I want all of the word the's returned to me as an array. Then I can specify that. Case insensitive matching is very important. Regular expressions are case sensitive always, unless you put in that I somehow somewhere or you modify it to include checks for both types of characters. And I can't just say give me capital the, capital or lowercase the, in all caps and all lower, because what if they're mixed? Who knows? It shouldn't be that way, but who knows? Depending on what you're looking for, it's easier to put on an I than modify your expression. Uh, so you can look up some of these others, but uh, they're all on the cheat sheets. That might be my last slide. Oh, good. So, I'm wondering if I should have a look at some of these. So, regexer is pretty simple. It has some nice highlighting up here, and it tells you what each of those elements were after you put them in. Maybe that's useful, I don't know. Here you've got a slash G modifier. So this one wants you to put it in right here, but you can't actually type it. I don't know how that works. I haven't played with this one much. Really, I just wanted to show you that these are groups. Each match 
showed up as a group, as a word in this case, but not necessarily, not necessarily always. I want to take this. The expression is any character from A to Z capitalized as a group, and then uh, slash W for words. Plus means one or more, so it's looking for a capitalized word with uh, any words after that, any letters after that. But it's found all of the capitalized Pascal case words. Make sense? So I just really wanted that text to put into the Dex 101. Is that wrong? <laughs> this is this is the site that he. I, I already had it, but I asked him, hey, what's the site that you prefer? And he said, Regex 101. So he'd rather watch me use this one anyway, I think. I liked this one quite a bit better right off of the bat. And I haven't played with it that much because I have desktop apps that I use for this. But immediately I noticed I can pick my flavor. JavaScript is pushing for POSIX, I think. PCRE is Perl. And they say PHP because nobody uses Perl. But this is Perl and this is POSIX. I don't... I don't actually know which way Python leans. I think it leans toward Perl, but I guess it's more specific in here. But I can pick my flavor. That's important because some so stuff just doesn't so work. Have a with w and I think so. But what kind of See, I really wish I knew as much as I thought I did when I started here. <laughs> <laughs> These are good questions, and I wish I had the answers. There, we need the answers, and I don't have them. Dan. You, you should ask my friend Google. He knows where to look. Well, so the regex tool I use, well, so you pick .NET one of the syntaxes, so. What? The online tool I use. Yeah. Allows .NET one of the flavors. Oh, yeah. cool. So, if I put my expression in here and I just say, give me all the slash Ws, it gives me an error. Why? Oh, it, no, it said one error. Now it's gone. Oh, so because there was some lag, so there was a slash, and I was like, hey, it's not that Yeah, just some lag. No problem. And if I say, that's one character, right? I specify one character at a time. If I want all kinds of characters, I can say, give me all the characters, one or more. Well, it ran into a space, which is not a word. So, yeah, it stopped. Now, I don't just want the first one, so I can put in this G modifier, makes it global, and look at all of the words it found now. Cool. What if I wanted something more specific? Let's say I want all of the words that have a T in them and end with uh, two words, or sorry, two characters, and that's the and that's the end of the word. Real easy. Well, let's say I don't know how to do any of this. Um, I I think it probably has some help in here somewhere, but. Uh, if I've got a problem with it, it's not doing what I want. So for example, I have, let's say instead of dots, I used www, but I accidentally left the dot in there. Well, that doesn't give me what I thought I wanted. That was a mistake, but I can't see that dot in there. I can go over here and see how it's matching and it explains it. That's super cool for troubleshooting. And only the finest tools will do that. That's not easy. I don't think that this fella does it. I don't see anywhere that it could. This one also doesn't show you the, uh, doesn't, doesn't, doesn't let you select the flavor. So by far, I'm, I'm a new fan of this one. Uh, Regex Buddy does all of this stuff, but it's 40 bucks, runs on the desktop. And it has that test bed, which is huge for me, but I wrote my own, so I'm mostly okay with that. So this is a really good, if you only had to have one tool, I'm mostly sold on this one. And I haven't, and I've only known about it for a few hours. So there's a uh, this this is really cool too. So the pattern modifiers it's got listed under here, so you don't forget them. Just look them up. And let's see. Code generator. Code generator. I didn't see that. Left. Cool. Yeah. So that's about all I have to offer for regex. But I did, I did download that app, but one of, the, one of the things that I notice when I see, oh, somebody didn't test this, is they don't put on the anchors. 
because you don't think about that. Whatever you put in does match, and you say, great, it's good. But then you tack on some garbage on the end, and it still matches, because they didn't put on the anchors. A lot of these have the anchors implied. They'll have one of these guys on there. .NET, after I blogged about it, and nobody pointed it out for like a year, and then some dude puts a comment on there and says, these things are anchored by default in .NET. Butthead was right. They're anchored by default. I didn't need the anchors in my expressions. So, important to know. Okay, I think that's it for regular expressions. What are we on time? Nine o'clock? Good grief. Do you have to go, Ben? Uh, do you guys have anything else? You have some stuff. You want to show it? Sure. Yes. No, I didn't. Um, and I thought about it. I was just trying to keep this shorter. Sure. But they are the one exception that I might point out as far as being able to negate, search for this but not that. Look ahead and look behind can be negated. Is that what you were going to say? I was just going to point out every once in a while it's nice to know, hey, search for this, but I have this before, but I don't want to part of my suite. So yeah. I'm matching so Green page. <laughs> um, Dave Child is the pink page. Here we go. He's on all kinds of different websites. This thing's just being scooped all over the internet. So they have here the look ahead and the look behind assertions, and they're they're kind of strange looking, and they're they make it hard to read. But hopefully you don't use them a lot. But when you do, they're good to know that they're there. The look behind and the look ahead says that this must be preceded by or not preceded by. This must be followed by or not followed by this expression. And put them in parentheses. That was kind of hard for me to figure out at one point. It's all one big group with these assertions in them. Make sense? So um, they're good to know that they're here. I would open up this cheat sheet and just look at everything that's in them and know them. Here are the pattern modifiers. I listed those. I didn't touch the string replacements. It's an, I touched on the groups. Make sure that you define your groups because then you can do replacements on the strings, that kind of thing. And here's the stuff that shows you how. Um, I didn't cover all this stuff by a lot. Here are the, I'm pointing at the screen, you see my mouse. The POSIX equivalents to some of the PCRE stuff that I showed you. I don't know those at all. I, I'm only interested in using one, learning one. If I have to translate it, I'll translate it, but I just kind of stick to PCRE. It's the one that always seems to be available to me. But they're all here. So it's good to know what's, th what's there and what's not. That's why we do these lightning talks, just to kind of say, that's out there, go look for it. Any questions? Let's wrap it up. Unless you guys want to show some stuff.